How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use proxies in Premiere Pro. So last week I made a tutorial about the lesser known time lapse method, which basically involves filming in 4K on your camera at a slow shutter speed for however long you need to film for. And while it's a really great method for getting an, an aesthetic of a time lapse with an easy file format to use because it's just one video file, Part of the problem with working with that in post is that it's a big video file. It's a big H.264 4K video file. It's a finalized file format. It's everything crunched in together, all the data crunched in together nice and tight. So for the application to be able to kind of look around that and figure out what's going on, it's not all that easy. What would be great is to be able to expand that so that the program, the software, can kind of navigate its way through all of the parts far more easily and understand what the footage is, what each frame is, so that it can allow scrubbing, allow editing, allow effects, allow treatment, everything like that far more quickly. So what you could do is convert all of your footage to ProRes or DNxHR or something like that that's a lot more workable. But the problem there is that you really multiply the amount of storage you need by like seven, eight, nine times because those files are just enormous. So what if we could take that easy file format and shrink it down into a teeny tiny low res file, kind of like a JPEG to a RAW. That would allow us to have something that's really workable in a file format but that doesn't take up much space on your hard drives and doesn't really overburden your computer at all when it comes to scrubbing through it and editing it. Well, that's what a proxy is. Let me give you an example. If we look at this clip, this is a 4K H.264 MPEG-4 clip straight out of the camera. I've added a little bit of color correction on this adjustment layer and I've sped it up by 600%. It's in a 4K sequence, so it's not shrunk down or anything and it's playing back at full resolution. Let me show you how it starts to stutter and struggle, even on my computer, which is a pretty powerful computer. Plays back nice and smooth, and then immediately, like within a couple of seconds, it starts to stutter and struggle to keep up. And there it's just struggling to decipher that footage. It just can't keep up with the demand of the editor. So that's not ideal. You don't really want to be editing like that. Even just scrubbing through, if I click, it takes a certain amount of time for it to even show me the preview of that frame that I'm wanting to fall on. Let me show you again, dropping that resolution to one eighth. Now, you'd think this would help, but it's not going to because it's, it's actually the file that it's struggling to decode, to decipher, not the resolution that it's displaying. I'm gonna put that back to full and this is what we're gonna do. First of all, we're gonna create an export preset because to use a proxy, you need two things. You need an export preset and you need an ingest preset. So for the export preset, we're gonna hit Control or Command M just in our sequence and it's gonna bring up our export window. Now we're gonna go for format QuickTime. Yes, I know, QuickTime. I'm on a PC and I'm choosing QuickTime. It doesn't matter because we're not using ProRes. We're actually going to be using Cineform, GoPro Cineform, which is a widely accepted file format. You throw a GoPro Cineform file at pretty much any editing software and it will be able to handle it without a problem. So go for GoPro Cineform YUV 10-bit. We don't need it to be 12-bit with an alpha. We just need 10-bit. That's fine. All right, then come down to quality. Quality, we don't want four, we don't want high quality. We want as low as possible, so go for one. Okay, now resolution, uncheck that because we actually want to customize that resolution. Make sure that little chain is linked. And we're gonna make this four times smaller than 4K because we don't need it to be a high resolution file. We want it to be a low resolution file. So let's go for something that's four times smaller than, than 4K. So 2160 divided by four is 540. So let's put in 540 there. And if you make sure that that chain is linked, then it will adapt the width as well. So now we have a 960 by 540 file. Perfect. And then the frame rate, you want that to be the same. You don't want that to be changing the frame rate because if, for example, you're shooting at 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second, 120 frames a second, you don't want it to be converting that to a 24 frames a second clip for a proxy. Because when you're switching back and forth between proxy and source footage, high res footage, it's just not gonna line up if they're different frame rates, right? So you need them to be the same as the source. That way, any manipulation you do on the proxy represents the manipulations you do on the source properly. Same with the field order, same with the aspect ratio, to be honest. Everything you do, make sure it's the same as the source. 
Then don't render at maximum depth. The depth we want is YUV, that's fine. We don't need an alpha. And then that's everything. Okay, make sure none of this is checked. We want it to be a light file. If you don't even need audio, just uncheck that and that way it'll make it even lighter because it won't include the audio. Okay, and that's that's all done. That's our preset ready to save. We don't want to export that. We just want to save this as a preset. So if you come up here to save preset, we're going to call this 540p proxy export and hit save. Lovely. Now you can hit cancel on that and it's done. Now what we're going to need to do is open up Adobe Media Encoder so that we can create our ingest preset. Look at that. Nice new window. Adobe Media Encoder CC 2019. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now you see here is, well, that's the one that I normally use. This is the one that we just created. 540p proxy export QuickTime. It's a 960 by 540 frame size and frame rate based on source. Lovely stuff. So that is our export preset. So to create an ingest preset, you just come up here to this plus where it says create new preset. Drop that down and you'll see you've got an encoding preset, which is what we just created, or an ingest preset. Click ingest preset. And again, we'll call this 540p proxy ingest. Now, transcode files to destination. Um, you don't need to worry about this. Just set any destination because it'll actually prompt you to choose a destination later. And it'll also allow you to just save the proxy files next to the source files, which is what I choose to do all the time. So just set any destination for that. It really doesn't matter. And then format, QuickTime. Yep, that's all good. Preset, then choose the preset that we just created. 540p proxy export. And there you go. That's all you need to do. So hit OK. And that is now our ingest preset. Cool. So now we can head back to Premiere Pro, right click on our clip and just reveal in project. That's where it is. It'll show it wherever it is in whatever bins you have. Right click on that proxy, create proxies. Now you're seeing the previous proxy preset that I made here, but I don't know if this is what you will be seeing when you load this up for the first time. What you need to do is just add an ingest preset. So click that button, navigate to documents, Adobe, Adobe Media Encoder, the latest version, because that's where your latest version will be saved, presets, and choose your preset there. That's our ingest preset there because we named it ingest. So 540p proxy ingest.epr. I'll put the different file paths depending on whether you're on PC or on a Mac in the comment section. So check that out if you're not sure where to find your presets. Okay, so that's our preset loaded up. And now you see here destination next to original media in proxy folder. Perfect. So it'll create a subfolder next to your clips and put all of these low res clips in there. That's all I want. Hit OK. It'll create a proxy job send it straight to Adobe Media Encoder. And if you open that up, you can see how quickly it's turning through that and creating that low res Cineform file because it's an easy file format for it to understand. And what's great about this is that if you've imported 100 clips, you can select them all, right click, create proxies, and it will send all of those as a batch to Media Encoder, run through them by themselves without having to press anything, without having to do anything. And when it's done, it just updates all of that metadata in Premiere Pro so that Premiere Pro knows where to look for proxy files in each of those files, in each of those clips. All right, so we can quit Media Encoder now. Lovely stuff. And then to enable proxies, you just hit this toggle proxies button. If you don't see this, just hit that plus there and it'll be somewhere here. You can just click and drag it into that main space so that you can use it. Now, it means that when it's blue, proxies are enabled. When it's not blue, proxies are not enabled. I mean, you'll be able to tell pretty quickly. Let me show you scrubbing without proxies. Yep, laggy, not, not good at all, really, not good at all. And with proxies, ooh, beautiful and smooth, look at that. I can even play it back, and it plays back absolutely fine. Not a single frame is missed. Lovely stuff. Yeah. Now, in terms of quality, the difference there, it's not really noticeable, is it? Because this window here is not much bigger than a 540 window. In fact, I think it's probably a bit smaller than a 540 window. So if we zoom in to 100%, this is where you'll start noticing the difference in quality, right? I mean, that, if you don't notice that, I, I don't know what's wrong with you. 
But at that fit level, you don't notice that difference in quality. And it just, it allows you to edit this so much faster. So now I can just scrub through this. I can change the speed of this if I want. I can multiply it by two so I can make it 1200. Why is it stuck? Oh, <laughs> I haven't got proxies enabled. There you go. Let's enable proxies, make it 1200. And you see it just, it runs through it absolutely fine. No stutter whatsoever. Brilliant. And just to show you the actual file size difference, let's just reveal this in Explorer. Our proxy file here is 298 megabytes. Our source file is one gigabyte. So you're looking at just a little under a third of the file size. If you didn't include audio in that file, it would be even smaller because it's an uncompressed audio file format. And then the best thing is that you don't need to do any reconnecting. You don't need to make sure you disable proxies before you export because when you hit export, Premiere Pro will automatically choose the high res files, the original source files. It will ignore the proxy files when it's exporting. It has a command that says, do not use proxies. So even if you're editing with your proxies enabled, you can export in your highest quality and it will use the source files to do that. So that is how you create proxies. That is what I recommend you do if you have an edit that's struggling on your machine and you just can't quite get a nice fluid playback. Well, proxies will allow you to do that. All right, I hope you found this useful. Give it a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and hit that subscribe button to get more videos from me at DoD Media. It's tutorials like this, it's gear reviews and a monthly giveaway. Leave a comment in the comment section to let me know what you thought. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.